Channel 3. Uh, friends, there it is, Spreaker Channel 3. You're live on the air. Let's get going here. Welcome, friends. Coast to coast and worldwide. You're live on the air with Pastor Rick. All right, there it is. So let's try it again. Channel 3. Uh, mercy, my friends. It's just... <sighs> well, welcome to the podcast, my friends. Uh, 30 minutes of testing again, and I, like I said, I had all this fired up, ready to go uh, about uh, an hour before podcast time. And I was ready to go. I had it all set up. Everything was working fine. And like I said, it's the the Channel 3 that is not working. Uh, and it's like I said, it's on its way out. So I will pray over it, put some oil on it, and keep, you know, keep hoping that it stays connected and works. So, because that is my main channel. So, uh, the second main channel here. So, anyway, 30 minutes of technical again. Welcome, friends. Good to see you guys. Let's pray it in. Let's get started because we're just going to keep agitating the devil more and more, friends. The more we stay on it, keep pressing in, keep digging in, we're just going to agitate the devil that much more. So let's get to it, friends. Lots to cover. Uh, again, Worldwide Live Ministry Podcast Network. Pastor Rick here on a Monday night, November 21st. Almost talked myself out of not doing this one, cutting it off and resetting, but I just felt that urge to... Uh, you know, just agitate the devil a little bit more, friends. Just stay on it no matter what happens. So that's what's happening here. That's what's going on. Trying to cut the equipment off. And uh, I thank you guys for your prayers, your continued patience, and your support here on all the channels. So thank you guys again for that. Um, Let's get to it, friends. Let's just get right into the Bible study for this Monday night, friends. And I'm still starting it at 1030. I don't care what the devil thinks. I'm starting it at 1030. So let's get to it, friends. Oh, uh, thank you, Father. Heavenly Father, thank you so much for everything. Uh, even through the agitations, through the trials and tribulations and trial and uh, problems here that I continue to have. Uh, you know, I know your hand is on this. Uh, the equipment, the Wi-Fi, the message here. I know this is your calling, this is your work, and this is all for you. Uh, you know, like I said, even even through the equipment failures and the and the just the the you know the problems that I continue to have on startup here, uh, Father God, I just thank you. I glorify you through all of it, no matter what, uh, because I know this message needs to get out. I know there's an urgency and an importance of getting this word out uh, through the internet here, through the uh, services and the, the channels here. Uh, I thank you for that. I thank you for that calling. Well, I want to, again, thank you, and I want to pray for family, friends, everybody watching, hearing, uh, give them patience, understanding, discernment, wisdom, courage, strength, and hope, Father God, as we battle the end times here and uh, go through and deal with the end times here as uh, you know that just the world is just growing darker every day and all these outside issues and problems the devil and his minions are just causing all kinds of chaos and problems and issues and uh, you know just uh, doing their thing so we got to be on our post and do our thing here so uh, again we glorify you we will not let the devil pry our hands off that cross Father God, we drop the net, pick up the cross, and keep following you. So thank you for that. Thank you for giving us the uh, the encouragement and the courage to keep pressing in and digging in day by day, hour by hour. Thank you for uh, for also uh, giving me that courage and discour and uh, encouragement from the devil's discouragement. Uh, it's see, it's not going to work here, Father God. It's not going to work. So I give this all to you for your glory. I pray, I pray uh, just, you know, I keep praying and keep digging in. Thank you again for this calling, for this mission. As I'm always humbled and uh, grateful for the opportunity I get. Uh, again, Father God, even through, you know, every podcast, every message, I have some kind of problem and issue with this 
uh, with the the equipment because it's just failing, it's just breaking down. Uh, uh, so I uh, glorify you, I praise you. Um, uh, you know, and I know your hand is on the finances. Uh, as I know, uh, the, the financial blessings will come in as I have those channels set up. Uh, Father God, this is all to glorify you. This isn't about me. And uh, no matter what the people think or say or the, the critics or the, the, you know, the haters, pray for them too, Father God, those that come against us. So uh, thank you, Father God, for all that right now. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen and amen. All right, well, as I heard before, to hell with the devil, right back at the end of the line with the minions, <laughs> right? Ah, oh, mercy, tell you, friends, I, I, I'm not kidding, I tried an hour, a full hour to get everything set up and ready, and it was fine, it worked perfect. Um, I had it through the system, I had it through the, the speakers and all that stuff. And then airtime comes and nothing. Like I have no main channel through the volume here in my headset. And I don't know. Um, I'm not sure what's happening here. So um, <laughs> I'm like, I've retraced everything. I have gone through every cord and every cable and nothing. So. It's just gone. Which I, like I said, I'm confused because I don't know why that's doing that. Nothing. Nothing. Oh, well, you know, I told the devil you could keep trying, but you're not going to win. I guaranteed you are not going to win this because... Uh, yeah, we got we got Jesus, my friends. That's right. All right. Well, nothing there, so I don't know what. I just don't know. There's a cable missing somewhere. Um, and I don't want to spend too much time on it. I really don't because um, I can hear it out the other channel, so uh, through the other one. So uh, let's get to our channels here. We got Anchor, CastBox, Tin Can. And there you go on this Monday night after 11 now. But we're kicking it at 10.30. I'm starting. to That's the start time no matter what. All right. Well, we got so much to cover, friends. Let's just get right into it. Pastor Rick here, World Wide Live Ministry Podcast Network on a Monday night here, 21st. Again, almost, almost talked myself out of it, folks. I'm... I was so agitated with the equipment and just everything just breaking down on me. And I'm just trying to hold on and use what I've got. And I've got some good working parts. So, uh, you know, I, uh, I, I'm going to be down. I, I kind of know. I knew that. That's what's going to happen. I, I was going to be down on this HP because uh, it's old. It's about 10 plus years old. Uh, old Windows 7. It doesn't work all the way. Like everything's just kind of falling apart on it. So, I keep praying, you know, I, I know I'll lay hands on it and, and and keep praying for it. And I know, you know, I'll get through it. I've got enough stuff to uh, to work, um, you know, as best I can here. So I'm going to keep pressing in. I You know, I, I know, again, I know it's going to be uh, handled. God's got it. I don't even have to worry about that. So let's get into the podcast, friends. Like I said, a lot to cover. I want to go into the Orthodox Study Bible Archive series, friends. We're going to continue that three-part series or four-part series. Uh, we're going to look at Acts chapter 3 and 4 on this opener. Well, not right now, but the opener part of the opening scriptures is going to be in Acts. So um, let's get to it. We've got uh, our podcast notes, scriptures and opening uh, no, so let's go ahead and do that. Amen. And again, I don't get it. Like I said, I'm so baffled at the equipment here at what's happening with it. Um, like nothing. Like there's just nothing. Um, and I, I'm shocked. When, I mean, not surprised really, but like I said, it's old. Uh, the equipment's old. That, that HP is old. Uh but 
yeah, an hour of testing. Worked fine. Heard everything. Uh, did some mixing. Did some recording on it. And then uh, air time and out the door. So I, you know, I thank you guys. I, I really appreciate you guys' support and your prayers. Um, to continue the ministry here, it takes a lot. And I, I know I've been answering emails and messages and stuff. And, oh, you know, kind of a mixed bag of hate there, you know, uh, about the, the way I do things here and the content and the ministry stuff. Um, and, and I guess I kind of expect that. So, you know, the you guys that are here that are that appreciate that, I, I appreciate you guys. I really do. So, um, you know. I just keep moving on, right? We just keep digging in. Well, let's get to it, friends. Uh, I want to go into the Sinner's Prayer of Salvation right now, friends. And and, and you guys can get a hold of me again. Uh, Worldwide Live Ministry Podcast. Or not the network part, but uh, at yahoo.com. That's the official email for the ministry here. Amen. So let's move that down. Amen. Hopefully and get all the cords and cables out of the way. Get my coffee. Rolling already, friends. Ah, mercy, friends. I've got my backup, and I got my water with me tonight too. That's a that's always a good thing. All right, let's roll them sleeves up here. We are live on Restream TV, friends. We got uh, all our friends with us tonight. Uh, thank you guys for that again. Uh, let's get to it, dear God. I know that I am a sinner. And I need a Savior. Amen. Yes, I do. I want to turn away from my sinful life to the life you have planned for me. Please forgive me for my sins and cleanse me of my past. Make me new. I know your son, Jesus Christ, died on the cross for me. And I believe in my heart that you raised him from the dead. At this very moment, I accept, confess, and proclaim Jesus Christ as my personal Lord and Savior. To live in my heart from this day forward. Thank you, Jesus, for your grace that has saved me from my sins and has given me eternal life. Please send your Holy Spirit to guide me and to help me to do your will for the rest of my life. Church, in Jesus' name, we pray. Amen and amen. All right, well, come on in, friends. 30 minutes of problems, and we're here. Uh, live on Monday night. Appreciate you guys. It is Monday night, November 21st again. Just going through the podcast notes. Our opening, again, the scriptures, we're going to go through our Orthodox Study Bible uh, archive series. And we're going to go through Acts chapters 3 and 4. And then I'm going to dive into uh, some of the other scriptures we've got. We're going to continue on our uh, on our, what is it, the archive notes, uh, A New Life in Christ. Uh, and then we're going to take a look again back in the Orthodox Study Bible Archive series. Lots to cover tonight, my friends. Um, yeah, welcome. <laughs> I know. Uh, come on in. The church is open. The doors are open. The church is on. We're here. You're here. I always appreciate you guys, friends. Uh, you make me feel warm. Amen. Thank you guys again for your support. Uh, let's go to the serenity prayer, friends, as I always like to share with you, because, you know, we need some serenity. So let's get to it right now. Now, God, grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change and the courage to change the things I can and the wisdom to know the difference. Living one day at a time, enjoying one moment at a time, and accepting hardships as the pathway to peace. Taking as Jesus did this sinful world as it is, not as I would have it. And trusting that he will make all things right if I surrender to his will. That I may be reasonably happy in this life and supremely happy with him forever in the next. Amen. All right. Let's go ahead and go on over to the, uh, what do we got here? The Lord's Prayer. Amen. Let me check a monitor here real quick. I want to see how things are turning out on YouTube. Uh, amen. On the main channel. So thank you guys again for your support. And there we are right on the main page. How awesome. What a blessing that is. Uh, continued, friends. So again, if you guys 
uh, happen to be clicking through on the main page, the main channels of YouTube, I'm on the main uh, first opening page. That's pretty awesome. Really, what a blessing. How awesome is that? Again. Uh, and I, you know, I, I know it's just persistence. I can't give up. I can't stop. And, uh, you know, through, even through all the problems, you, you guys know, as you watch the, pro, as you watch the podcast, the first 30 minutes are me battling the equipment and battle. It's mainly just the channel three. That's the only issue I'm having. Everything else seems to be working great, but. It's almost like every broadcast, I, and I was talking to a, one of my other friends there, and I was saying it's like, you know, are you guys waiting for the train wreck? Uh, are you waiting for me to fail? Well, um, I don't know. Uh, you know, like I said, I, I wrestle with it, you know, and you guys know how, how upfront and, and uh, transparent I am here. I, I don't cut no, uh, you know, I, I don't uh, go around the soft spots. Or whatever that means. But, you know, you guys know. I just tell it like it is and uh, lay it on the line for you. Lay it on the, put it on the table for you. So, uh, you know, uh, always something different. You know, like I said, I'm just being obedient to the Spirit and, and what I've been called to do. And uh, hopefully you guys, you know, somebody gets it. Um, you know, and like I said, I do appreciate you guys' uh, consistent uh, support here and, you know, hanging out. So even if it's just for a few minutes, you know, I understand that. So. Uh, but, uh, <laughs> eventually, hey, you know, I'll get a replacement laptop and, uh, I'll be able to kick back up and, uh, have that operating good. Uh, you know, I'm going to mess with it after broadcast here. I've got a couple more updates I got to do. Um, so again, this is our third service here, um, on Restream and again, trying to get back on that, uh, you know, getting back on that, on that scheduling track. So, uh, as I, you know, but it's like, it's pretty ambitious. You got a lot of scheduled out podcasts, but I have to, I have to do it. I, I need this for myself. I, I know, uh, there are, uh, you know, friends, supporters out there that you guys need this too. So I owe Jesus everything. I owe God everything, my life, everything. And this is the least uh, I can be doing for the kingdom. And so if I can do this here, even through all the problems and the issues of the laptop, uh, and operate on the ones that I do have, uh, that's okay. I'll get through it. So thank you guys again for that. So, you know, and like I said, I always appreciate you guys that, that do get it and, and do want to have a desire to hear the word. So, uh Thank you guys. That's all I can do is I'm just humbled and, and grateful and uh, just thank you guys for uh, the opportunity I get to, that you guys give me to uh, get this content out to you. So thank you. It's it's humbling. It's really humbling here. And I always appreciate the opportunity. So we're going to, you know, I'm just going to dig in and share some Bible with you and uh, hope you guys get it. So thank you guys again for that. All right, the Lord's Prayer live right here, friends. Our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. And give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive them that trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil, church. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen to that, right, brothers and sisters? Amen to that. All right. Well, at least the microphone works good. I do have the other three that are operating uh, really good. So, you know, count the blessings, not the, not the loss. So, uh, you know, I guess somehow I heard that somewhere. And we got to just count the blessings and be grateful uh, for what we do have and, you know, be humbled about it. So, um, I got some equipment to work. The devil's not going to stop this ministry anyway. I got so much anyway. Um, all right. I am not liking this uh, position of the microphone here. All right. So, um, yeah, bless my microphone. Amen, right? <laughs> it works. Uh, I'm, I'm digging it. So thank you guys again. Oh, I got to take a deep breath. Like I said, after 30 minutes of fighting with my laptop, almost, you know, there was a, a window that I could throw. Well, I got the studio window, but 
I almost <laughs> threw it out the window. Uh, but I, you know, I'm I'm gonna hold off and be patient with it. So, Amen. All right, let's turn that down. That doesn't even work. So at least it's recording. I do see that it's recording in the Spreaker uh, Channel 3, which is weird because I've got one co- going in, but the volume going out is not working, and that's the problem I'm having. That's that's the issue and the trouble I'm having. So anyway, let's move on. Let's boot up and suit up because Lord knows we need the armor of God, friends. All right, finally, my brethren and sisters, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that ye may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, and against spiritual wickedness in high places. Ah, wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God that ye may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all to stand. Stand, therefore, having your loins girt about with truth. Amen, friends. Uh, And having on the breastplate of righteousness and your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Above all, taking the shield of faith wherewith ye shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. And take the helmet of salvation, the sword of the Spirit, which we know is the word of God, friends, right now. Uh, praying always with all uh, supplication in the Spirit and watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for all saints. And for me that utterance may be given unto me that I may open my mouth boldly to make known the mystery of the gospel for which I am an ambassador in bonds that that therein I may speak boldly as I ought to speak. Amen. Good stuff there, right? Friends, boy, do we need to hear that. All right, and again, gonna sneeze. We they uh, we've had a crew in here working on the bathroom, uh, the upstairs uh, VIP bathroom, and they sprayed chemicals again in the hallways and on the flooring and on the, uh, you know, on the on the uh, the area uh, because you know you gotta put the sealer on it, you gotta put a, uh, you know, the the all the bug spray, the spider spray on it, and I tell you. <laughs> It makes it hard to breathe, so, you know, we kind of masked up and stuff and got all that, uh, you know, set and prepared, but um, the, even, the, even the fans are blowing, and, and, you know, I had to close up the doors here and uh, block off the section for the for the studio here to, to do this podcast, and I can still smell it, and I'm about to sneeze all night, so, uh, again, thank you guys for your prayers uh and your support of course all right let's get the clipboard over here amen all right so we got that scripture notes are out of the way uh let's see okay so we're gonna go right into acts three and four friends i think that's what i want to go ahead and do now and i'm gonna put that over here and my clipboard over here uh amen friends so all right, relax, take a breath, my friends. I think we're going to be okay. Um, amen. So what do I want to ask first? So, yeah, Acts, uh, Acts chapter 3 and 4. We're going to go ahead and read that. And then, of course, uh, we're going to kind of kind of jump around a little bit here. But we are going to go into our uh, other archive notes here. A new life in Christ, friends. Come on in. Come on in, friends. You are welcome. Let's get to it. A lot to cover. And again, you know, I'm I'm looking at the camera and I'm thinking I'm I'm sitting crooked, but I'm not. That's just the way the the camera's uh, pretty much set up. So, Amen. Always got issues with this stuff, but it works. So let's get to it, friends. And again, with the headset not being straight, man. I tell you. <laughs> Ah, uh, mercy, my friends. Lord, give me give me help here. Strengthen me. Uh, <laughs> I just, what can you do, right? What can you do? You just got to move on and press in and keep digging in. Amen. So, amen. All right. Well, you know, it's a camera show, I guess. I, <laughs> I don't know, but I, I feel like I'm sitting crooked or something. Is it the chair or is it the camera angle? 
<laughs> well, let's read some Bible scriptures and see if that helps. Amen. I know it will. The miracles of God, friends. Amen. Right? The miracles of God. And again, uh, wham. All right, right there. <laughs> what can you do? Well, let's read, friends. How about we get right in into the miracles of God as we look at the evangelism uh, a lame man healed in uh, Acts chapters 3 and 4. Amen. All right. Not going to try to fix it anymore. I'm going to leave it alone and move on. All right. Well, again, Acts 3 and 4, and I'm reading out of the Orthodox Study Bible here, and hopefully everything will uh, is set up pretty good. All right, so the topic of this one, friends, the subtopic is, of course, evangelism, a lame man is healed. Let's read it. Let's see what it has to say. Uh, amen. Let's put this over here. All right, battle in my bookmarks already. So, he says, Now Peter uh, and John went up together in the temple the hour of prayer. Uh, the ninth hour, and a certain man, lame from his mother's womb, was carried, whom they laid daily at the gate of the temple, which is called Beautiful, to ask alms from those who entered the temple, who, seeing Peter and John about to go into the temple, asked for alms, and fixing his eyes on him with John and Peter, and said, Look at us. So he gave uh, them his attention, expecting to receive something from them. Then Peter said, Silver and gold do not, or I do not have, but what I do have, I give you in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Amen, right? Uh, rise up and walk, he says. He tells him, uh, rise up and walk. And he took him by the right hand of the Father and lift, uh, uh, let's see, uh, right hand and lifting him, him up. And immediately his feet and ankle bones received strength. So he, leaping up, stood and walked and entered, uh, entered the temple with them, walking, leaping, and praising God. And that's what we need to do every time through our uh, trials or tribulations when things are, you know, seeming dark and, and just, you know, that we're, we feel lost in our flesh. Uh, and that's what we need to do. So we, that's what we need to do is... Um, as I just had an epiphany on this, I, uh, you know, uh, as he says here, leaping and praising God. And all the people saw him walking and praising God. Then they knew it was he who sat begging uh, alms at the uh, beautiful gate of the temple. And they were filled with wonder and amazement at uh, what had happened to him. So, Again, I just got in a, uh, like a light bulb second there. Uh, that's what I need to be doing. Instead of looking and being content, you know, instead of just, uh, you know, it's frustrating dealing with a broken laptop. And I, you know, you guys know what's going on. Um, but, you know, to be content with what I have. And, and I'm very content. I'm glad that uh, I got this stuff working. Some of it works anyway. But, you know, just to carry the message out. So, that was quite uh, quite a light bulb moment for me, just right there at that second uh, as I read that scripture, and that's what we all need to be doing, you know. Just hey, have that uh, you know that appreciation for what we do have, Amen. So as we continue, so as they looked at wonder and amazement uh, at what had happened to him, let's, let's go to the next one here. Peter's sermon at Solomon's porch. Now. As a lame man who was healed uh, held on to Peter and John, all the people ran, uh, let's see, they ran together to them in the porch, which is called Solomon's, greatly amazed. So when Peter saw it, he responded to the people, Ah, uh, men of Israel, why do you marvel at this? 
Or why took you so intently at us? Or looked so intently? As though by our own power or godliness we have or had made this man walk. Uh, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the God of our fathers, glorified his servant, Jesus, whom was delivered up and denied in the presence of Pilate when he was determined to let him go. But you denied the Holy One and the just uh, and asked for a murderer to be granted to you and killed the Prince of Life, whom God raised from the dead, of which we are witnesses. And his name and, and his name through faith in his name, and made this man strong, whom you see and know, yes, the faith which comes through him was given him this perfect soundness in the presence of you all. Now, as we go into I believe verse seventeen here, yet now, brethren, I know that you did it in ignorance as did also uh, your rulers. But th those things which God foretold by the mouth of his prophets, all his prophets, uh, and that Christ would suffer, he has thus fulfilled. And here we go, friends, as he says, repent, church. He says, repent, therefore, and be converted, and your sins may be blotted out. So that times of refreshing may come from the presence of the Lord. And that he may send Jesus Christ, at, uh, oh, who, who was, was preached to you before, whom heaven must receive until the time of for, uh, restoration of all things, which God has spoken by the mouth of, his, of all his holy prophets since the world began. For Moses truly said to the fathers, The Lord your God will raise up for you a prophet like me from your brethren. Him, uh, as he says, him you shall bear in all things, whosoever, what's, whatever he says to you, and all shall be, the, uh, be that every soul who will not bear that prophet shall be utterly destroyed. All right, from among the people. Yes, and all the prophets from Samuel and those who follow, as many as have spoken, have also uh, foretold those days or these days. You are the son of the prophets as we are reading out of Acts chapter 3 and then going into chapter 4 here. Uh, and the covenant which God made with our father, saying to Abraham, And in your seed all the families of earth shall be blessed. To you first, God, having raised up his servant, Jesus sent him to bless you and turning away every one of you from your iniquities. So there we go, friends. All right, let's roll on over to chapter 4 here, as I will get these later. Uh, all right, so this one, uh, subtopic title, of course, is Peter and John are arrested, or arrested. Now, as they spoke to the people, the priests, the captain of the temple, and the Sadducees came upon them, being greatly disturbed that they taught the people and preached in Jesus the resurrection from uh, the dead. And they laid hands on them and put them in custody until the next day, for it was already evening. However, many of these or those who had heard the word believed, and the number of the men came to be about uh, 5,000. All right, let's roll on to before the Sanhedrin. And I got to fix that part. I'm sorry, friends. Give me a second here. I thought I could uh, let it go, but it uh, it bothered me here. So let me see if I can fix this real quick. 
And that's it. I'm going to leave it alone and move on to the next one. Amen. So, and it came to pass, as we continue, on the next day uh, that the rulers, elders, and scribes, uh, as well as uh, Aeneas, uh, the high priest, uh, or Annas, uh, the high priest, Caiaphas, John, Alexander, and many as of the family of the high priest were gathered together at Jerusalem. And when they said, or had set them in the midst, they asked by the power, uh, or by what name, have you done this? By what authority, right? Uh, then Peter, filled with the Holy Spirit, said to them, rulers of the people and elders of Israel, if we this day are judged for a good deed done to a helpless man, by what means has been made well, let it be known to you all and to the people of Israel, and by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom you crucified, he says, whom God raised from the dead, him this man stands, uh, get that together. Uh, or, let's see, what is it? That, um, let's see. By him, this uh, man stands here before you whole, friends. What a miracle that is. Now, this is the stone which was rejected by your builders, by you builders, which uh, had become the chief cornerstone. Not is, let's see, or nor is there any, or salvation, boy, I can't hardly read that, uh, salvation in any other, for there is no other name under heaven, even among uh, men, by uh, which we must be saved. Amen. All right. Now, when they saw the boldness of Peter and John and perceived that they were uneducated and untrained men, uh, they marveled and they realized that they had been with Jesus. Amen. And seeing the man who had been healed standing with them, they could say nothing against it. And I got to get that uh, part of that note underlined here. I forgot to do that. So, and verse 15, but when they had commanded them to go aside out of the council, they conferred among themselves, saying, what shall we do to these men? For indeed, that a notable miracle has been done nothing or done through them is evident and has been uh, done through them is evident to all that dwell in Jerusalem. Uh, but we cannot deny it but so that it spreads no further among the people, let us severely threaten them that from now on they speak to no man in this name. It's pretty hard to not talk about Jesus. I know that's why part of the reason why I got into the podcast because everybody kept saying, all you do is talk about Jesus. I said, you, you, or what that was, but then they said, uh, you talk too much. I said, yes, I do. Thank you very much. I talk too much about Jesus. Every chance, every opportunity I get. If it ain't about God, I don't want to hear it. Or I don't want to speak it, right? Uh, amen. So, I'm just saying, friends, we've got to make our vocabulary, make our words about Christ, right? We've got to make our sentences and well, you know, the sentences, but, you know, we've got to speak everything. But uh, if that makes any sense, but, you know, we've got to make our, our uh, conversations about Jesus. That's what I was trying to get to. Kind of the roundabout long way to do it, friends. We took a kind of a little drive out in the country and kind of drove back in. And then we met that, that sentence that I was trying to get to, right? So anyway, uh, yeah. Y'all know what I'm talking about. So, thank you guys on that one. So, let's get back to this one. But, in verse 17 again. But so, as I get to the underlining part here. Because I do want to get that. Uh, so, let's look at it again. 
But so that it spreads no further among the people, let us severely threaten them. From now on, they speak to no man in this name. Uh uh-uh, not on my watch. We're not not gonna we're you know we're we're not gonna do that. We're gonna spread the word about Jesus, friends. Amen. All right, let's go to eighteen. So they called them and commanded them not to speak uh at all nor teach in the name of Jesus. But Peter and John answered and said to them, Whether it is right and decided God to listen to you more than to God, you judge. Uh, For we cannot but speak the things which we have seen and heard. And that's my point, friends. We've got to speak what we have heard from the Lord. So then, or when they had further threatened them, uh, they let them go, finding no way to uh, punishing them because of the people, since they all glorified God for what had been done. For the, the man was over 40 years old on whom this miracle of healing had been performed. Whew. What an awesome, what, just awesomeness, right? Uh, amen. All right, let's go to the next, and i got to fix a couple of spots here. Not much. Uh, again, as I am in my repair of the Bible thing uh, going on here. All right. Well, amen. Ah, we'll work on that. Let me get some coffee here. And uh, what do we got? Uh, 30 minutes. We're just into half an hour of the podcast here, friends. You know, I'll, i got a lot more for you, but I'll probably, you know, we'll probably be at about two hours again tonight, so. Amen. Well, I hope you had a wonderful Monday, friends. I just saw you hours ago on the last broadcast. As I, like I said, I'm trying to stay on this. So, again, I hope you guys had a great Monday. Uh, I know as I was just wrapping up the podcast, uh, wishing you guys a a great uh, start to your Monday morning, your work day. Amen, amen, amen. All right, friends. Well, like I said, you're live on the air. I'm not even going to worry about that computer stuff going on. Uh, You are live on the air, friends. Pastor Rick will buy live Minister Podcast Network. Hey, we're reading Acts chapters 3 and 4, and I got a few little notes, and uh, we're going to go ahead and keep going here. So, let's uh, move on, friends, to as we continue in Acts chapter 4. And let's read from, as it says, prayer and power. We are at about verse 23 here. So, let's do that. Now, again, subtopic is going to be prayer and uh, powers. We are in the Orthodox Study Bible Archive series here, friends, on this Monday night. The 21st already, friends. All right, and bring or being let go, and went to their own companions and reported all that the chief priests and elders had said to them. So when they heard that they raised their voice to God with one accord and said, Lord, you are God, uh, who made heaven and earth and the sea and all that is in them, who by the mouth of your servant David have said, Why did the nations rage and the people plot vain things? The king of the earth took their stand and the rulers uh, were gathered together against the Lord and against his Christ. For truly against your holy servant, as we go into verse 27, uh, Jesus, whom you anointed, both Herod and Pontius Pilate, uh, with the Gentiles and their people of Israel uh, were gathered together to do whatever your hand and your uh, let's see your purpose determined before to be done. Now, Lord, look on their threats and grant to your servants that with all boldness, here friends, with all boldness, they may speak your word by stretching out your hand to heal, and that signs and wonders may be done through the name of your uh, your holy servant, Jesus. 
And they had prayed. The place where they were assembled together was shaken. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit. And they spoke the word of God, friends, as we should do with boldness. God doesn't give us the spirit of fear, but of love, power, and a sound mind, friends, and, and with boldness as we speak. All right, let's keep going here, friends. Giving for the common good as we go into verse 32, chapter 4 in the book of Acts on our opening scripture. Now... The multitude of those who believed were of one heart and one soul, and neither did any say uh, that any of the things that possessed with it was his own, but they had all things in common. And with great power, the apostles gave witness to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus, and great grace was upon them all. Nor was there anyone among them who lacked. For all who were processors of lands or houses sold them, or possessors of lands uh, and or houses sold them, and brought the proceeds of the things that were sold and laid them to the apostles' feet, and they distributed to each as everyone or anyone needed or had need. There it is. Uh, and Jesus, who was also named... Uh, let's see, let's go backtrack here. Uh, Joseph, not, that wasn't Jesus, that was Joseph, who was also named Barnabas by the apostles, which was, or is translated, son of encouragement, a Levite of the country of Cyprus, having land, sold it, and brought the money and laid it at the apostles' feet. And there you go. What a great uh, scripture that is, friends. That's Acts 3 and 4. So, there you go on that one. How awesome. All right. Uh, let me get my clipboard here, as I always like to do. Thank you guys again for watching here. Um, all right. All right. We're going to go into our next one. Yeah, as I, you know, I... Kind of pull them out and watch, uh, check it, uh, check it out, and uh, look at the scriptures here. So anyway, let's wrap up number seven here on a new life in Christ. Uh, amen. A new series here. All right, a new life in Christ. Series continued. All right. All right, so the vocal point, as we continue our notes here, uh, the vocal point was man's selfhood. I doubt whether the man uh, had any conscience of selfhood until Satan's, uh, Satan touched him at that point and said, half God said, as we know about Adam and Eve and all that in the garden, uh, and the, uh, the tree of life, right, which they partook of. All right, and the insinuation was God is keeping something from you that you might have. He is limiting you, and God knows that. If you do this thing which he has forbidden, yourself will have the root of the matter in yourself, and you will have the capacity and the uh, faculty. There it is. Had to sound it out, kind of stuttering there, but uh, had to sound it out. Uh, and the faculty in yourself for knowing Knowing and knowing, he says. And at present, under the embargo of God, you have to depend entirely on him. Well, yes, Mr. Devil, yes, we do. Right? Well, we don't rely on ourselves. We tried that. It didn't work out for us, right? Uh, so the point was that we have to rely on God, friends, and not of our own understanding. So as I continue here. Now, at present, under this embargo of God, you have to entirely apply, uh, entirely depend on him. You have to consult him, refer him, uh, defer to him. And as he says again, friends, we have to depend on God, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, friends. Yes, we do. All right, almost at that hour here. Welcome, friends. Come on in. All right, so again, we have to 
uh, entirely depend on him, uh, consult him, refer to him, and defer to him. You have got to get everything from him. Yes, we do. And all the time you can have it in yourself, and God knows that. You see, God is withholding something from you that you might have. Uh, And you are less of a being than you might be. So God is not really favorable uh, to you and your interests. No, watch this, friends. (sighs) Amen. So it was a uh, it was a maligning of God, but the vocal point was this. He says here in the notes, "You, you, you can be something. You can do something. You can be in the know about things. Self centeredness, self interest, self realization, and the other host of self aspects. Uh, the I awoke, and the I which had been uh, brought the enemy out." Of his first estate, I will be exalted above the stars. I will be equal from the Most High to awaken the I in man so that instead of man having his center in God, deriving everything from God, he aspired to have the center in himself. Instead of being God-centered, and again, this is the side notes here, uh, he was self-centered. That was the vocal point or focal point. Uh, a man who is enticed in the same pride as brought uh, about Satan's downfall, leading in the same act of independence. Nothing less than a bid for personal freedom from God is what, uh, as we know, Satan uh, tried to jump all over that and take over. So, uh, And you know what happened in that story, friends. Now this was and is high treason against God, deserving of death. But we were saved by his grace, friends. He did. Yes, he did. So let me go back over a few notes here. Psalm 14, 1, the chief position of Psalm David, the fool, hath said in his heart, there is no God. They are corrupt. They have done abominable works. There is none that doeth good. Psalm 14, 2, the Lord looked down from heaven upon the children of men to see if there were any that did understand and seek God in order, again, seek in order to worship God. Here on the notes, Psalm 14, 3, they are all gone aside. They are all together become filthy. There is none that doeth good. No, not one. Psalm 14, 4, have all the workers of iniquity, those who practice idolatry, uh, worshiping self, no knowledge who eat up my people uh, as they eat bread and uh, call not upon the Lord. Reflexibility and dependent uh, upon God or dependently. And there you go, friends. How amazing is that? How awesome. What a blessing that is, friends. Uh, Amen. All right. So there you go. Uh, That's a wrap right there, friends. Amen, right? How awesome. All right. So again, a series, A New Life in Christ, the archive series there, friends. And I hope you guys get something out of it. You guys can write those scriptures down for yourself and do that study on your own time there when you get a chance and an opportunity. Uh, Amen. Good stuff there. All right, uh, let's see, what do we got on the menu? Let me check my clipboard here, make sure I got all this together here. Thank you guys again for jumping on board with me tonight, my friends. Uh, hey, we're at our hour, friends. Uh, again, thank you guys. The first 30 minutes, you don't even want to bother with because I was fighting with my computer. You know, I had a, a blowout on my laptop again. And I couldn't get it to work, so I don't hear anything through my headphones. Um, I, it's like it's working, it's recording uh, through the mic here and through channel three with the mix or mixer, but I don't have any external volume. I can't hear anything. So, uh, so yeah, just 
fast forward the first 30 minutes, uh, friends, because there was nothing there. It was just me fighting with my cords and cables and trying to readjust my uh, my cords and microphone stuff. It just I couldn't get it to work. Still, no sound, no no volume sounds or levels out out of my mixer at all. I don't understand it. So uh, maybe I'll do the same thing again here. I don't know. Let me see it again real quick here. So that's not it either. Um, I thought maybe I, I disconnected something, but um, amazing. It just, I just, I'm so blown away. I, and I'm kind of frustrated with it because it should be working. You know, like I said, I. Okay, good. Thank you, God. It's a miracle. <laughs> I'll take it. Anyway, now I can actually hear it outside, but I can't hear the other one. So, I don't know. It's, uh, you know, it's, we'll just move on and do a sweep. Amen. So, again, I, I'm feeling like I'm tilting. I don't know what it is. I am, uh, you know, like I said, I've, I've gone through everything. I, I've gone through, like, trying to straighten out the camera uh, to straighten out the microphone here. And I'm... I feel like I'm tilting. I'm like leaning this way or something. I don't know what it is. I don't know. Give me a thumbs up if you guys can see everything okay and hear everything okay. Uh, I appreciate that. You guys click on that thumbs up uh, button there. I'd appreciate that if uh, you guys can see and hear everything okay. Amen. Now, I don't, you guys notice, I don't have the conversations on the uh, any of that stuff. Uh, I tried that the first uh, couple of years I was doing this when I started, and I got bombarded with haters. I just had to pray for them, and, uh, <laughs> you know, but it's just dumb. And, you know, like I said, I kind of blocked off the, the Twitch TV thing. I, I'm on Twitch TV, Minister Podcast Live over there at Twitch TV. And, uh, you know, I try to get everybody just to, to stop the comments because it just gets dumb. Uh, you know, what kind of shoes you wear and, you know, are you wearing socks and it's irrelevant. It's, if it's not Bible based, I, I'm not answering, you know, and, and so that's why, anyway, that's kind of the explanation of why I cut the, uh, comments off here. Uh, we'll think about that. We'll pray on that. So, uh, anyway, we got that done. The archive series, a new life in Christ and the Christian life. Amen. All right, well, let's see. I got a little bit more for you. And, of course, I want to share this with you. Um, some side notes again here, friends. Now, over in John 6, 35, Jesus, my Lord, is the life-giving bread. I have him, I have life. That life satisfies my spirit hunger. It thrills and fills me from the depths of my being. I have a continual supply of that life. Amen. Yes, we do. All right. Flowing in to me from heaven, bringing the heaven's blessing, or bringing me heaven's blessings, uh, heaven's joys and heaven's contentment. It supersaturates my whole being with God himself. How awesome is that, friends? All right, well, let me get to the next scripture here, friends. And let me go ahead and fix this little spot right here. And we will get going. Amen. All right, well, like I said, I hope you guys are doing well. Praying for each and every one of you. I want to lift you up in heaven's uh, in Father's name right now. Amen. All right, I do, I do. All right, good enough. We'll call that good and move on. Uh, let's see. Where did where did I say it was going to go here? Let me get my clipboard back. Oh, mercy. Uh, let's do that. Uh, how awesome, friends. And I hope you guys are taking notes. Uh, again, we're going back into the archive series here. Uh, where do I want to go? And 35, right? 32. All right. 
again, uh, Romans 6 and 7 for this one. And uh, I think we'll read uh, Romans 6 and 7 first. And then we will get into the scripture here. So let me see if I can find 6. That would help, right? That would help to find the scripture. All right. Go on over, friends, and I'll meet you there. When you get there, give me a big amen. Hallelujah. Praise his holy name, friends. Uh, Romans 6, I believe, what did I say, 6 and 7? That's right, we want to go there first, friends. Let's go ahead and check it out. Uh, amen, friends. Let's go ahead and do that right now. Baptism dead to sin and alive in Christ. How exciting is that? All right, chapter 6 in the book of Romans. Again, the Orthodox Study Bible series continues, the archive series here. Now, what shall we say then? Shall we continue to sin that grace may abound? Certainly not. God forbid, right? How shall we who died to sin live any longer in it? Or do you not know that as many of us were baptized into Christ Jesus, were baptized into his death? And therefore we were buried with him through baptism into death that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in the newness of life, friends. That's right. And I got to fix that spot right there before I move on to the next. Uh, amen. All right. Uh, all right. So next verse. For we have been, uh, he says, for we have been, United together in the likeness of his death. Amen. Certainly, we also shall be in the likeness of his resurrection, church. Uh, knowing this, that our old man was crucified with him, and the body of sin might be done away with, that we would no, be lo or no longer be slaves of sin. For he who has died has been freed from sin, now, if we died with Christ, we believe that we shall also live with him, knowing that Christ, having been raised from the dead, dies no more, and death no longer has dominion over him. For the death that he died, he died to sin once for all. But the life that he lives, he lives to God. And likewise, friends, you also... Um, <laughs> this, these things are ridiculous. All right. Uh, reckon yourselves to be dead into sin, but alive in God, in Christ Jesus our Lord. And therefore, do not let sin reign in your mortal body, that you should obey it, uh, see, obey it in lust. And do not present your members of instruments of unrighteousness to sin, uh, but present yourselves to God as being alive from the dead and your members as sin, uh, see, as instruments of righteousness to God. For sin shall not have dominion over you, uh, for you are not under the law, friends, church, but we are under grace. Amen. How awesome is that, right? All right, what then? Shall we sin because we are not under the law but under grace? Certainly not, or God forbid. Uh, let's see. Do you not know that to whom you present yourself slaves to obey, you are that one slaves whom you obey, whether of sin leading to death or of an obedience leading to righteousness? But God be thanked that you were slaves of sin. You were obeyed from the heart that form of doctrine to which you were delivered. And having, now we got to get that mark up there, uh, but having been set free from sin, friends, uh, you became slaves of righteousness. I speak in human terms because of the weakness of your flesh. For just as you presented your members of slaves, as slaves of uncleanness and of lawlessness, leading no more lawlessness, 
So now present your members as slaves of righteousness for holiness. For you were slaves of sin, and you were free in regard of righteousness. What fruit did you have then in the things of which you are now ashamed? For the end of those things is death. But now, having been set free from sin and having become slaves of God, you are the uh, you have your fruit to holiness and the end in everlasting life. For the wages of sin is death, but friends, the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. All right, let's go to verse seven or chapter seven here. Baptism, freedom from law, and union with Christ here, friends. That is uh, Romans seven. Or do you not know, brethren, for I speak to those who know the law, that the law is dominion over a man as long as he lives. I got to get that note up there. And of course, over here, I forgot. All right. Now, as he lives, right? As he says, he lives. Amen. Watching the clocks here. All right, for the woman who has a husband is bound by the law to her husband as long as he lives. But if she die, or the husband dies, she is released from the law of her husband. So then, while her husband lives, she marries another man. She would be called an adulteress. But if her husband dies, uh, she is free from the law, so that she is no adulteress. Uh, though... She has married another man. Therefore, my brethren, you also have become dead to the law through the body of Christ, that you may be married to another, to him who was raised from the dead, that uh, we should bear fruit to God. Uh, for when we were in the flesh, the sinful passions uh, which were aroused by the law were at work in our members to bear fruit to death in our members to bear fruit to death. But now we have been delivered from the law, friends. We have been delivered from the law. Having died to what uh, we were held by, that we should serve in the newness of the Spirit and not the oldness of the letter. Now let's look at sin is... Uh, let's see if I can even read this. Uh, blah, blah, blah. What is that? Um, sin is what the holy is holy to produce death. Amen. All right. Well, there you go. That first hour is already wrapped up, friends. And uh, boy, is that bright light. So I'll have to cut that down just a tad bit here. And I'll go ahead and work on that in a minute. And there's Tin Can. Already loaded up and ready to go. Monday night, late night, third service, friends. Uh, how awesome is that? All right, let's cut that volume out. Cut the speakers out. All right, so what shall we say then? Is the law sin? Certainly not. On the contrary, I would not have known sin except through the law. For I have not known consciousness un uh, see, unless the law had said you shall not covet, but sin, taking opportunity by the commandment, produced in me all manner of evil desire. For apart from the law, sin was dead. I was alive once without the law, but when the commandment came, sin revived and I died. And the commandment which was to bring life, I found to bring death. For sin taking occasion by the commandment deceived me and by it killed me and therefore the law is holy and the commandment holy and just and good now we're going to look at the flesh uses what is good to produce sin as we are digging into the word of romans chapter six and seven on this late night here a little after midnight friends you're live on the air pastor rick worldwide live ministry podcast reading through the bible uh, scripture by scripture and book by book, friends, uh, you are here in Studio A. Uh, glad to see you again. Bypass the first 30 minutes or so, working on the 
uh, volume level and having issues with my cable lines in the channel 3 on the HP. So I kind of just moved through it. You know, it took me, like I said, about the first 30 minutes of the podcast. I was fighting with it. So uh, you guys know. You know when you come here, I'm going to try to get on the best I can here uh, as I deal with uh, technical issues. So we're praying. Thank you guys for your prayers and support here. And uh, give it all all to God. Just give it all the glory to God, no matter what obstacles we got to go through day by day, friends. We give all the glory to God. Just be glad in it. Amen. Rejoice and be glad in it. Amen, friends. All right. Uh, well, let's continue. Let's keep going here, friends, uh, as we are in 7, chapter 7 in the book of Romans. The Archive Series, the Orthodox Study Bible Archive Series. How awesome is that? So, it has been what is good become death to me. Certainly not, but sin. That it might appear sin, which produceth death in me, through what is good, so that sin through the commandment might become exceedingly sinful. For we know that the law is spiritual. Uh, And I am carnal, but sold under sin. For what am I I am doing, uh, I do not understand. For what I will do, that I do not practice. For what I hate, that I do, then I do what I, I will not to do. I agree with the law that it is good, but now it is no longer I who do it, but sin that dwells in me. For I know that in me, that is in my flesh, of course, uh, with me by or but how to perform what is good, I do not find for the good that I will do. I uh, see continues that not uh, let's see, uh, I do not right something like that uh, that I do not do. But the evil that I will not, I will not to do, that I practice. Now, if I do what I will not to do, it is no longer I who do it. I know, don't get confused, friends. Hey, man, good to see you guys. Appreciate you jumping online here late night. Uh, We're reading uh, Romans 6 and 7. Amen. But sin that dwells in me. Uh, I find then law that evil is present with me, that no one wills to do good. For I delight in the law of good according to that uh, inward man. But I see another law in my mind, or in my, let's see, let's backtrack. Uh, Let's see. For I delight in the law of God according to the inward man. But I see another law in my members warring against me, uh, the law of my mind, and bringing me into captivity uh, to the law of sin, which is in my members. Oh, the wretched man that I am, friends. And we can just give it over to God right now. The wretched man that I am, who will deliver me from this body of death? I thank God through Christ Jesus our Lord. So then with the mind I myself serve the law of God, but with the flesh, the law of sin. And there you go, friends. Now, if you want some extra homework, you got Romans 8, friends, to go ahead and look at. Amen. All right. So we're going to get into our archive series, uh, friends. You guys know uh, the story, the background. I had a little bit of a uh, steady time with the Orthodox uh, pastor. Uh Amen, and that was a, a good experience, and I so I was able to uh, get a couple of the Orthodox Study Bible Bibles, and so I want to share some of the archive series here with you. Now, this topic, friends, is really good. It's based in Romans, and it covers the Holy Baptism, because I get a lot of emails, and I answer those myself, but I get emails on this, and they, they were kind of throwing up topics. Well, what about the Trinity? What about... Uh, the Holy Baptism. So let's take a look at it. hope you got your notebook tablets with you, uh, friends. Uh, so write this down. 
topic in the book of Romans 6 and 7 is going to be holy baptism. Let's look at it. Let's dig into the word, friends, as we have our Bible study tonight, this early morning now, a little after 12, uh, 14, a little after a quarter after here. Uh, <laughs> let me get my, my cords unwrapped around me. Mercy. All right. Coffee time. Amen. Well, let's see. I'm still tangled up, aren't I? All right. Holy Baptism, Orthodox Study Bible, uh, study series here, Orthodox uh, Archive, uh, the Archive series. Let's read it, friends. Now, here's a question I always get, well, you know, that comes through the emails. What is baptism? Now, simply put, as uh, the scripture says here, uh, baptism is our death, burial, and resurrection in union with Jesus Christ. Uh, it is a rite of passage, as we know, uh, given by Christ to the church as an entrance into the kingdom of God and his promise of eternal life, which is awesome. Now, the Apostle Paul describes the promise of God in this mystery. Now, again, in the Orthodox Study Bible here, friends, uh, as most, most Orthodox call it, most successfully uh, or succinctly, what is that word? Um, and let me pronounce it and, you know, kind of go through it here. Uh, succinctly, I believe. It's S-U-C-C-I-N-T or C-L-Y. There's your homework, friends. Uh, sound that out. Figure that out. Uh <laughs> I struggle with that word every time I read it. So we're going to move on. All right. So when he writes, Therefore, we were buried with him through baptism into death, that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in the newness of life. And again, this is going to get, throw some scriptures at you. So uh, take a look at Romans 6, 4, as we just read. Uh, now, to baptism or to baptiza literally means to immerse, uh, to put in to, and historically, as the Orthodox Church says, uh, has baptized by uh, triple immersion in the name of the Father and of the Son, as we know, and of the Holy Spirit. And that is over in Matthew twenty-eight nineteen. Now, in the Old Testament, baptism was pictured by the passage of God's people. When Moses threw the Red Sea, 1 Colossians 10, 1, 2 for that. John the Baptist, the last prophet of the Old Covenant, baptized in water for uh, repentance, as we know, friends. So, as it says in Mark 1, 4 and Acts 19, 4. Now, Jesus received John's baptism, thereby, uh, in, let's see, thereby transforming the water in baptism uh, into the new covenant. Now, baptism in, uh, in the means by which we enter the kingdom of God in John 3, 5, are joined to Christ, that's Romans 6, 3, and are granted the remission of our sins and the gift of the Holy Spirit, that's over in Acts 2, 38. Now, what results from baptism from the start? The church has uncovered baptism as, uh, as he says here in the first part. Uh, let's see. Now, uh, at first, or a first and second dying. Our first dying with Christ is baptism with a body with him on the cross. Or that, as we know, that was on the cross there. Uh, in the 4th century, St. Cyril of Jerusalem instructed his new converts, you were led by the hand of the holy pool of divine baptism. And each of you was asked if he believed in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost here. And you made that saving confession. And you descended in. Uh, let's see, into the water and came up again three times, 
in the very same moment you died and were born. Amen. Again, friends. Now, the second death of baptism is continued, dying to sin daily as we walk in the newness of life. Now, St. Paul wants to, or writes to the Colossians concerning baptism, Colossians 2.12, and concludes by saying, Therefore put to death your members which are on the earth, fornication and uncleanliness, passion, evil desire, and covetousness, which is idolatry. Colossians 3, 5. All right. Now, uh, the resurrection of righteousness. This is our life in Christ. Uh, our new birth and entrance into God's kingdom, John 3, 3. Our newness of life, Romans 6, 4. It is our being joined to Christ in his glorified uh, humanity and indwelt by God himself, John 14, 23. Our relationship with God is not something static, a legal fiction given to us by a divine judge. Rather, this is a dynamic and real life in Christ, holding the promise, church, of everlasting life. And our resurrection to new life now forms a prelude to the resurrection of our body at Christ's second coming. All right. Uh, now three, an intimate and continual oh boy, communication. There you are. Uh, we are raised to new life for a purpose. Um, let's see. Uh, purpose, opinion, and communion with God. In this sense, baptism is the beginning of eternal life. For this reason, Peter writes about, or that, baptism, as we are talking about here. Um, let's see. Baptism now saves us, 1 Peter 3.21. Uh, it is not that more or mere removal of dirt from our bodies, but provides us with good a good conscience towards God. Because of those promises, the priests pray, the newly uh, baptized, thanking God, who have given us unworthily or unworthy through, or though we may be blessed, punct, uh, let's see, purification. I know, i got to sound out those words. They're troubling me here. Uh, through holy water and divine sanctification, through life-given chrismation, and <coughs> who now also have been pleased to bring new life to your servant, newly illuminated by water and the Spirit, and granted remission of sins, voluntarily and involuntary. I know, I tell you, that was a big uh, a big message there, friends, but I, I that was part of the study that I wanted to share with you. So as it talks about the baptism, friends, we clearly now have an understanding of what the holy baptism is. Amen. All right. Well, it's sure good to see you guys. We're just going through the archive series in the Orthodox Study Bible, my friends. Amen. All right, uh, let's move on. Go to the next as I am battling still. I'm battling my, um, let's see, my, I'm battling my bookmarks. Uh, incredible. All right, and let's go to the next one here. Um, I can find it on t and, of course, every time I open a page, the bookmarks drop out. Why not? Uh, amen. All right. Ba -ba 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 Boom. Man, it just takes forever to find these pages, and I already have them written out. So, let me see, and where do we want? We want to go, friends, um, let's see, first, second, third. 
I think what I want to do here, friends, we'll just go into this part, the second coming of Christ, and it is in, friends, it is in Titus 1, 2, and 3. So let's, uh, I'll read this part for you again, uh, Orthodox Study Bible Recap Series. Uh, we're looking at, as I'm just kind of watching the time, the clocks here, uh, we're looking at the second coming of Christ here, friends. Check this out. Now, the Orthodox understanding of the second coming of Christ is clear. The Lord uh, Jesus Christ truly will return, as we know. Now, a second advent is not a myth nor an empty promise, friends. Come on now. Uh, nor is it a metaphor. In fact, each time the divine liturgy is celebrated, the priest makes a proclamation to the Father that reveals how uh, the church responds. Not only to the second coming of Christ, but to all of his works. Check this out, friends. Now, remembering the saving uh, commandment, Jesus commands to uh eat his flesh, and drink his blood. And all that has been done for us on the cross. Now, the resurrection on the third day, the ascension into heaven, the sitting on the right hand, and the second and glorious coming we offer you for your own, uh, from what is your own on behalf of all and for all. All right. Now, let's look at the third part. Now, Orthodox Christians also believe the New Testament revelation of the second coming uh, of Christ is meant to uh, stimulate our preparation for it, not our speculation about it. Now, there's a difference. If you write that down, uh, friends, as he says, uh, now the Christians, it's as Orthodox, of course, as we are, uh, here, going through this, uh, Christians also believe that the New Testament revelation of the second coming of Christ is meant, now watch this, to stimulate our preparation, not our speculation about it. Now, watch that. Now, this uh, explains the relative simplicity which is, of course, in the Nicene Creed, as we uh, kind of dig it in here, uh, the most universal confession of faith in all is Christendom, uh, addresses Christ's return. Now, he will come again with glory to judge the living and the dead. And we will all be on that judgment seat, friends. Right? We know the scripture. We know the verse where it says... Uh, we will be on that judgment seat. So, as he says here, uh, so it explains the relative simplicity, again, which goes back to the decent creed, uh, the most universal confession of faith, as of all is Christendom. It addresses Christ's return. He will come again, friends, with glory to judge the living and the dead, whose kingdom still have no end. The emphasis of historic uh, orthodoxy is that Jesus will come again and when he will come again. All uh, right. So, thus, as St. Paul writes, uh, what does he write here? He says, denying ungodliness and worldly lust, should, uh, we should live soberly. Um... Man, what is that word? Righteously and godly in the present age, looking for the blessed hope and glorious appearing of our, of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ, who gave himself freely for us, church, uh, that he might redeem us uh, from every lawless deed and purify for himself his own special people, zealous for good, Works And that's going to be, again, we're going to read Titus 1, 2, and 3. So this is in uh, Titus 2, 12, 14. So there are signs of Christ coming, as we clearly have seen. To be sure, Jesus prophesied many events that would take place in the world prior to his return. 
as we saw and read in Matthew 24, and I believe that is uh, Luke 21, 7, 36. Let me correct that part. Now, uh, but even those, uh, what is that? The gospel of Jesus, uh, pa- or passages, uh, close with Jesus' exhortation to virtue, righteousness, and preparation for the judgment of Christ and his apostles um, issue several uh, severe warnings, uh, implicit and explicit, against second-guessing the nature of his coming. Now, here's some scriptures for this, friends. Uh, I hope you write these down. Matthew 24, 3, 8, 36, 43, and I believe that's chapter 44, uh, 44 and 50 as well. Now, Luke 21, 7, 9, and then we've got uh, Luke chapter 34, I believe. And then Acts 1, 7. Uh, what else is this one here? Uh, boy, I'm not able to really read that one. I think it's 11. Uh, and then, uh, or Matthew uh, five one three, I believe that one. And um, I'm not really sure. I think that's Peter three eight ten is on that last one there. So again, we're talking about the second coming of Christ, and we're in Titus chapters one through three. Amen. And I'm just going through this here. So much of modern Christendom has come to divisive speculation regarding Christ's return. And we are divided into pre-millennial, uh, post-millennial, and amenial camps, breaking it down even further. Now, there are pre-tribulation, mid-tribulation, and post-tribulation adherents and that's always a controversy. People want to fight with it and argue with it, say it doesn't exist, it's not real, it's not in the Bible. Well, yeah, it is. You just need to read your Bible before you speak out a term there. So anyway, before I get revved up and started up again, uh, friends, it is here. So we're talking about, uh, as it says here, uh, pre-tribulation, mid-tribulation, and post-tribulation adherence and Christian part ways to the new denominations uh, as though they spring up uh, around interpretations of events that have not yet even come to pass. All right. Now, throughout history, again, going back to the Orthodox Church, it steadfastly insists on the reality of the second coming of Christ as settled belief. Now, but has always granted liberty on the questions when it still or will it, when it will occur. It's going to happen. It's that's just a matter of time. It's it's not if, it's when it's going to happen and are we prepared and not scared, friends. I'm just reading here. So, uh let's look at this as we continue. Uh let's see. So, as he says here, the second coming of Christ as a second or a settled belief, but has always granted liberty on the question of when it will occur. So in the last, as and we're going to get into that too, in the last chapter of Revelation 21 and 22, uh, Jesus speaks these words. I am coming quickly, friends, as he says, as we know in Revelation. I am coming quickly. Uh, three different times, 22, 7, 12, and 20. His coming will occur on a day, friends. Now watch this. I hope you write this down in your notes here. Uh, as he says and states, His coming will occur on a day and at an hour when it is not expected, friends. When, when the least that we're expecting it. Uh, the Apostle John, the author of Revelation, concludes his book with a warning. Now, again, I hope you write this down, friends. 
For I testify to everyone who hears the words of the prophecy of this book. If anyone adds to these things, God will add to him the plagues that are written in this book. If anyone takes away the words of this book of the prophecy, or this prophecy, God will take away his part in the book of life. I I would say that's a pretty stern warning, friends. Don't mess with it, because there's going to be consequences for what you do. Uh, Take away or add to it. Again, all over in Revelation 20 and 21, which we are going to get to. So, to confess the return of God is to stand squarely within the... uh, uh, And I can't uh, really (laughs) read that too much. Uh, I believe it's the uh, apostolic tradition to add when to the promise of his coming is warned against the uh, sacrifices as members of the bride of Christ. Let us attend instead to be ready as again, the church, the Christ is the bridegroom and the church is the bride. Amen. Wow. Is that powerful friends? I hope you're paying attention to the signs here. Now, let's kind of go back, because we're kind of going to be in that anyway. Uh, I want to go, where is it at? To Titus. Uh, if I'm even going the right direction, probably. Um, let's see. That's Jude. Oh, mercy, my friends. Boy, we got to pay attention to what's happening, friends, I tell you. All right. Uh, let's see. I know where it's at here. So, um, bah, 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 bah. all the way over here, of course, I'm not finding it. But let's, uh, let's read Titus 1 through 3 here, friends. Amen. Let me get to it here. I'm just trying to get through it. What is going on with that book? All right. That's Timothy. We don't want that. Um, There it is. Titus. Titus, the, you know, the the man, the guy, the thing. Let's read it, friends. How about Titus 1, 2, and 3? Let's go into that real quick. Now, Paul, a servant of God, an apostle of Jesus Christ, according to the faith of God's elect, as we read here, Uh, and the acknowledging of the truth which is after godliness, in hope of eternal life, which God that cannot lie promised before the world began. But hath in due times manifested his word through preaching, which is committed unto me according to the commandment of God our Savior. To Titus, mine own son, after the common faith, grace, mercy, and peace from God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ our Savior. For this cause I left thee, or left I thee in Crete, that thou shouldest set in order the things that are wanting, and ordain elders in every city as I had appointed thee. Uh, If any be blameless, the husband of one wife, having faithful children, not accused of riot or unruly, for a bishop must be blameless as the stewards of God. Not self-willed, not soon angry, not given to wine or strikers, not given to filthy lucre, but a lover of hospitality, a lover of good men, uh, sober, just, holy holy temperate, holding fast the faithful word as uh, had been taught, that he may be able to uh, sound doctrine, both to exhort and to convince the gainsayers. For there, let me tighten that up there, get that up there, for in verse 10 here in Titus 1, for there are many unruly and vain talkers and deceivers, especially they of the circumcision, whose mouths must be stopped to subvert whole houses teaching things which they ought not for filthy lucre's sake. One of themselves even 
uh, a prophet of their own said the Cretans are always liars, evil boasts, or beasts, slow bellies. This witness is true, wherefore rebuke them sharply, and they may be sound in faith. Not giving heed to Jewish fables and commandments of men that turn from the truth. Unto the, pro, the pure, all things are pure. But unto them that are defiled and unbelieving is nothing pure. But even their mind and conscience is defiled. They profess or profess that they know God. Now, uh, we are seeing this in the end times here. They profess that they know God. And let's get that together here. Um, but in works they deny him, being abominable and disobedient unto every good work reprobates. In chapter 2 in the book of Titus, But speak thou the things which become sound doctrine, that the aged men may uh, men be sober, uh, grave, temperate, sound in faith, in charity, and in patience. The aged women likewise, that they may be in behavior as becometh uh, holiness, not false accusers, not giving to much wine, teachers of good things. And let's roll over here to the notes again. Uh, that they may teach the young women to be sober, to love their husbands, to love their children, to be discreet, chaste, keepers at home, good, obedient to their own husbands, that the word of God be not blasphemed. Young men likewise exhort to be sober-minded, in all things, shewing thyself a pattern of good works and doctrine, shewing uncorruptness, gravity, sincerity, sound speech that cannot uh, cannot condemn, that he that is of the contrary part may be ashamed, having no evil uh, thing to say of you. Exhort servants. Uh, to be obedient unto their own masters and to please them well in things, not answering again, not purloining, but shewing all good fidelity, that they may be adorned the doctrine of God our Savior in all things. Uh, for the grace of God that bringeth salvation hath for appeared to all men, teaching us that denying ungodliness and worldly lust, we should live soberly, righteously, and godly in this world present world. Amen. All right, just trying to get caught up on a couple of notes that I, I missed this whole uh, book here, this whole, all of it here. So, teaching us that denying ungodliness and worldly lusts, we should live soberly, righteously, and godly in this present world. Looking for that blessed hope and the glorious appearing of the great God uh, and our Savior, Jesus Christ, who gave himself for us, that he might redeem us from all iniquity and purify himself a peculiar people, uh, zealous of good works. Now these things speak, church, and exhort and rebuke with all authority and let no man despise thee. All right, that's verse 15. Now let's go to chapter 3 here, friends, in the book of, of course, Titus. Now let me get caught up here. Uh, take a break, grab some coffee, and let, uh, I'm going to get caught up on a couple of these parts here that I missed. And then I'll go back over it again and uh, check it out. Make sure I finish all of it here. All right. All right, friends, uh, again, kind of bear with me here. I we just got to get caught up on a couple of things uh, that I had missed. Basically, the whole book, I did not get a chance to get on here and refix this. Again, this is a new Bible that I just uh, recently got, not too long ago, but uh, always good to change out. All right, I missed that. Hang on here. 
to try not to, try not to get too wild. Oh, mercy, I got a sneeze coming on. Again, I tell you, those chemicals that we had, that they, you know, we got sprayed, like I said, throughout the building, throughout the, the units here. And uh, <laughs> it's still lingering. It's just kind of floating around like a big cloud. Uh, so, anyway, mercy. So we're having some coffee. We're reading Titus uh, 1, 2, and 3. We're about to go into chapter 3 in the book of Titus here, friends, on this, uh, well, Tuesday now. But uh, we started this, the third service here, uh, Monday night, Restream TV, live with Blog Talk Radio, Spreaker, YouTube, and more. Amen. Starting in on my, my backup copy here in just a bit. All right, let's continue here, friends. Amen. So as we look at chapter 3 in the book of Titus, I tried to scoot my chair up here. Anyway. Put them in mind to be subject to principalities and powers, to obey magistrates, to be ready to every good work, to speak evil of no man, to be no brawlers, but gentle, shewing all meekness unto all men. For we ourselves also were sometimes foolish, disobedient, deceived, serving divers' lusts and pleasures, living in malice and envy, hateful and hating one another. But after that, the kindness and love of good or God, our Savior, towards man appeared, not by works of righteousness, uh, which we have done, but according to his mercy, he saved us by the washing of regeneration and the renewing church of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Praise his name. Now, which he shed on us abundantly through Jesus Christ our Savior, that being justified by his grace, we should be made heirs according to the hope of eternal life. This is a faithful saying, and these things I will that thou affirm constantly, uh, that which have believed, they which have believed in God might be careful to maintain good works, These things are good and profitable unto all men. But avoid foolish questions and genealogies and contentions and strivings about the law, for they are unprofitable and vain. And let me get to that again. Not much. I'm not going to mess with it too much, but uh, I do want to get that one taken care of here. Amen. So kind of like a, uh, now Titus is like a, a kind of a structure to live, friends, how, how we should live, right? Amen. So let's go ahead and look at this uh, verse 10. A man that is an heretic after the first and second abomination reject, knowing that he that is such subverted or is subverted and sinneth being condemned of himself. When I shall send Artemis unto thee, or Tychicus, be diligent to come unto me in Nicopolis, for I have determined there to winter. Uh, now, bring Zenus, the lawyer, and Apollos in their journey diligently, and nothing be wanting into them, or unto them. And let ours also uh, learn to maintain good work for necessary uses that they may be unfruitful. All that are with me salute thee. Greet them that love us in the faith. Grace, church, be with you all. And we got to say amen, amen, and amen. Uh, good scriptures, good scriptures. All right, Titus 1, 3. Now let's go back to church. Let's go ahead and go back over to, and I want to get that together here. Uh, I want to go back to Revelation, uh, friends, so I'm going to do that. Revelation 20, or 21. Uh, I don't know what to do. I think I look good to this. All right, so Revelation 20 and 21 we're going to look at, but let's go to... Uh, where do I want to go here? 17. 
I'm going to go all the way over to the book of uh, chapter 17 here. Nope, where is it? Um, 45. And, um, <laughs> man. Uh, Lord, help me on my bookmarks. They're uh, not cooperating here. All right, so check this out. Again with the notes, really good here. Um, and we, what we meant, oh, no, we're going to do that next. Okay. We are ready to go, my friends. Uh, again, going back into the um, Orthodox Study Bible, friends. We're going to be in Revelation. I'm going to jump to that right now. Uh, the Eternal Kingdom. This is really awesome stuff here. Now, um, let's see. Few saints have been blessed with the vision of heaven while still in this life. Now, Isaiah uh, saw heaven. I believe that's where we're at. Is that is that what we want here? Um, I might have jumped, but anyway, we were supposed to go to Daniel, but um, let's see. I think we'll. I'll have to come back to Daniel. So we're going to read this here. So when we read these passages, we know an abundance of mystical. Now let me backtrack. Let's go back here just a little bit into the notes here. Sorry about that, friends. Now, again, there's some, there's like three or four verses or chapters here. So, a few saints have been blessed with a vision of heaven while still in this life. Now, Isaiah saw heaven, and that's over in Isaiah 6, 1, 8. As did Ezekiel, which is over in Ezekiel 1, 1 through 28. And the apostle John saw a new heaven, which is God's eternal kingdom revealed in our as a city. Revelation 21 uh, 1 and then 22, 5, which we are going to go look at. All right, so when we read these passages, we note an abundance of mystical apocalyptic imagery. But the strong similarities between these passages suggest an inspired, uh, let's see, consistency of reporting on the visions, the living creatures, the light, the cherubim beings. The throne and the glory of the Lord all work together to unveil a kingdom of celestial majesty and splendor. Now, while confessing with the prophet Isaiah and the apostle Paul that eye has not seen nor heard, eye or ear heard, uh, nor have entered into the heart of man the things which God has prepared for those who love him. 1 Colossians 2.9 now, we nonetheless find, taking the scripture as a whole, that uncertain things can be said about the eternal kingdom. Now, number one, the saints who inherit God's kingdom lives in active fulfillment of his eternal plan. In the kingdom, humanity becomes all it is meant to be. And there is nothing at all the scripture to suggest that the eternal life means people uh, passively afloat on a huge white clouds, uh, strumming harps into the ages of ages. And number two, I believe, or still one here. Now, originally created to inhabit paradise, our first parents, Adam and Eve, uh, uh, chose to sin against God, friends. And were expelled from the garden. The kingdom of God is, uh, was closed to mankind. Genesis 3.24. But, uh, as he says, But God, in his love, called the creation back to himself, uh, speaking to us through the law and the prophets and ultimately through uh, his incarnate Son. Through new life in Jesus Christ, we are brought back by God's mercy, friends. Yes, we are. Uh, under the new creation. His everlasting kingdom as kings and priests will reign with him forever. Revelation 1.6 for that. Now, too, the experience a foretaste of the kingdom in the church. Now, the first words of the divine liturgy uh, spoken by the priests are, Blessed is the kingdom 
of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, now and ever and unto ages of ages. The church at worship enters or ascends to uh, the heavenly kingdom. For it is in the church that we are seated uh, together in the heavenly places uh, in Christ Jesus, of course. Now Ephesians 2, 6 for that. And are raised to where Christ is sitting at the right hand of God. Again, that is going to be over Colossians 3, 1. Now, in worship, we join the heavenly hosts and saints and angels in giving praise to our God as the body of Christ. We participate with uh, that great cloud of witnesses, Hebrews 12, 1. Now, surrounding us as we come to the throne of God, Hebrews 12, 2, we come liturgically or liturgically to the city of the living God, the heavenly Jerusalem to an innumerable company of angels, to the general assembly or general assembly of the churches of the firstborn who are registered in heaven, to God the judge of all, Hebrews twelve twenty two and twenty three, which are with this heavenly vision, the Orthodox Church, again out of the Orthodox study Bible here, friends. Um, each Sunday remembers not only those in the parish, but all those in faith who have gone on before us to their rest. Number three, knowledge of the kingdom motivates us to live in complete devotion to Christ, friends. Now, in this life, we have uh, a foretaste of the kingdom that inspires us to seek its fullness. So, in Paul's words, as we see here, uh, for now we see in a mirror dimly, but then face to face. Um, over First Colossians thirteen twelve, worship is not a solitary act; rather, it is the bride of Christ, friends. The one church, those on earth joining with those in heaven, giving thanks to our God and King, who has made us citizens of his uh, magnificent, uh, what does it say here? The order again, I believe, magnificence or magnificent, uh, <laughs> Order again, but now it's just so out of whack, I can't even read hardly through them. So I'm going to try to do the best I can here. All right. The Apostle John writes, Beloved, uh, how are we children of God? Uh, I believe that's what it says. Or now we are children of God. And it has not yet been revealed that we shall be. But we know that when he is revealed, uh, we shall be like him. For we... Uh, shall see him as he is, and everyone who has this hope in him purifies himself just as he is pure. It's First John uh, 3, 2, and 3. Amen. Ah, uh, yes, amen, amen. All right, let's, let's see here. So, Let's run on over, friends. Now, grab your Bibles. Make sure you got them out with you, of course, in church here. Uh, I want to go to Revelation, friends. Revelation, uh, which is very revealing to the Revelations, right? So, <laughs> right? Oh, uh, my friends, let's read the book. Let's read the Word of God, friends. Revelation 20 and 21. Now, and I saw an angel come down from heaven, having the key of the bottomless pit and a great chain in his hand. And he laid hold on the dragon, that old serpent, which is the devil and Satan, and bound him a thousand years and cast him into the bottomless pit and shut him up and set a seal upon him that he should deceive the nations no more. Now watch this, church. Uh, Till the thousand years should be fulfilled. And after that, 
Again, watch this key part. He shall be loosed again, friends. Amen. Now, and I saw thrones, and they sat upon them, and judgment was given unto them. And I saw the souls of them that were beheaded for the witness, friends. The witness, as he says. And I got to get this bookmark over here. Of Jesus and for the word of God, church, right there, for the word of God and for, as he says, Jesus, uh, and which had not worshipped the beast, neither his image, neither had received his mark upon their foreheads or in their hands, and they lived and reigned with Christ a thousand years. But the rest of the dead lived not again until the thousand years were finished. This is the first resurrection. Again, watch this, friends. First and second deaths, first and second resurrections. Um, two books, the book of life and the Lamb's book of life, which is clearly talks about here. Now watch this. Watch this as we continue here. Um, this is the first resurrection of verse 5. Now, verse 6, Blessed and holy is he that hath part in the first resurrection. On such the second death hath no power, but they shall be priests of God and of Christ and shall reign with him a thousand years. And when a thousand years are expired, Satan, again, Satan uh, shall be loosed out of his prison. You can't argue with that, friends. It's right there. Debate it all you want, but it's not going to work. And she'll go out to deceive the nations which are at are in the four quarters of the earth, and Gog and Magog, uh, to gather them together to battle, as we clearly are seeing right now in the end times. Now the number of whom is as the sand of the sea, and they went up on the breadth of the earth, encompassed the camp of the saints about, and beloved city, and fire came down from God uh, out of heaven and devoured them. And the devil that deceived them was cast into the lake of fire and brimstone, where the beasts and the false prophet are, and shall be tormented day and night forever and ever. All right, uh, now in verse 11, And I saw a great white throne to him that sat on it, from whose face the earth and the heaven fled away, and there was found no place for them. And I saw the dead, small and great, and before God, and the books were open, and another book was open. So see, it talks clearly about the two books right here. Uh, people always want to debate it and said, there's only one book. You're reading wrong. No, you're reading wrong. You need to read your Bible before you speak out of turn there. So it clearly states and says there are two books. So as he says in verse 12, and the books, plural, not singular, the books were opened. Uh, and another book was opened which is the book of life. And the dead were judged out of those things which were written in the books according to their works. All right. And the sea gave up the dead which were in it, and death and hell delivered up the dead which were in them. And they were judged, every man, according to their works. And death and hell were cast into the lake of fire, and this is the second death, friends. And whosoever was not found and written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. I'm just saying, friends, you better read your Bible before you speak out of turn or not of unknowledge. And I pray that you do, friends. All right, chapter 21. And I saw a new heaven and a new earth for the first heaven uh, and the first earth was passed away, and there was no more sea. And I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from God out of heaven, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people, and God himself shall be uh, with them, and be their God. 
And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes, and there shall be no more death, neither sorrow, nor crying, nor or neither shall there be any more pain. That's awesome, friends. What a uh, what a uh, uh, insp- uh, inspiring uh, word that is. Uh, and no, uh, and it says, and the former things were passed away. As I was about to cough and and sneeze at the same time again. Wow. All right. And he that sat upon the throne said, Behold, I make all things new. And he said unto me, Write, for these words are true and unfaithful. And he said unto me, It is done. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. I will give unto him that is a thirst of the fountain of the water of life freely. Amen. And he that overcometh shall inherit all things, and I will be his God, and he shall be my son. But the fearful and unbelieving and the abominable and murderers and whoremongers and sorcerers and idolaters and all liars shall have their part in the lake of uh, fire or lake which burneth with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. Now, if you look at that verse, church, if you look at that and kind of break this down. Now, the first words that he says here in chapter or verse eight, chapter 21 but the fearful. So that means that if you walk by fear or live by fear of what man thinks or what others think or family or friends or brothers or sisters or uh, just man in general as what I'm reading out of this and what it clearly states to me is verse 8, but the fearful. So if you're afraid, I mean, we all have fear. In the flesh we have fear, of course. But... As I'm understanding this, and people are going to get, you know, debate about this, and they're going to argue and fight, and, ah, that's not what it says. Well, yeah, it is clearly saying here, uh, friends, but the fearful and unbelieving and the abominable and murderers and whoremongers and sorcerers and idolaters and all liars, friends, uh, shall have their part in the lake which burneth with fire and brimstone, Again, which is the second death that they talk about here. So, (laughs) live by faith, not by sight. Don't be in fear, friends. All right. And there came unto me uh, one of the seven angels, which had the seven vials full of the seven last plagues, and talked with me, saying, Come hither, I I will shew thee the bride, the lamb's wife. And he carried away, or me away in the spirit to a great and high mountain and shewed me the great city, or that great city, the holy Jerusalem descending out of heaven from God, having the glory of God and the light which or was like unto a stone most precious, even a jasper stone clear as crystal. And had a great wall high and uh, had twelve gates and the gates twelve angels. And uh, the angels, uh, names written thereon, which are the names of the twelve tribes of the children of Israel. Now, now all four of these gates obviously had three. Um, as it says, uh, all the gates uh, had uh, the gate says here. Or let's see, on the west gates three. So there was three gates on each. And the wall of the city had twelve foundations, and in them the name of the twelve apostles of the Lamb. And he that talked with me had a golden reed to measure the city, and the gates thereof, and the walls thereof. And a city lieth four square, uh, and the length is as large as the bread, uh, or breadth. And he measured the city with the reed, twelve thousand furlongs. It's a lot. Uh, now the length and breadth of the height are equal, as measured the wall thereof in a hundred and forty and four cubits, according to the measure of the man, and that is of the angel. And the building of the wall of it was jasper, and the city was pure as gold, like unto clear glass. And the foundations of the wall of the city were garnished with all manner of precious stones. The first, now let's go to get kind of a little bit of uh, running through here uh, as it talks about the stones. Now, the first foundation was jasper, second was sapphire, third, Caldani, the fourth, an emerald, 
Uh, the fifth, a Sardonyx. The sixth, Sir, uh, Sardius. The seventh, Chrysolite. The eighth, Beryl. Uh, the ninth, a Topaz. The tenth, a Chrysopasis. And the eleventh, a Jacinth. And the twelfth, an Amethyst. For, uh, quite descriptive here, friends, as we clearly see. Now, and the twelve gates were twelve pearls. Every several gates was of one pearl and the street of the city was pure gold and as uh, were transparent glass and I saw no temple therein for the Lord Almighty, God Almighty and the Lamb of the temple of it and the city had no need of the sun neither of the moon to shine in it for the glory of God did lighten it, and the Lamb is the light uh, therefore, uh, thereof. Uh, and the nations of them which were saved shall walk in the light of it, and the kings of the earth do bring their glory and honor into it. And the gates of it shall not be shut up at all by day, and there shall be no night there. And they shall bring the glory... Uh, in honor of the nations into it. And there shall in no wise enter into anything that defileth, neither whatsoever worketh abomination, or worketh a lie, or maketh a lie, but they which are written in the Lamb's book of life. And let's go to 22, friends. And he shewed me a pure river of water of life, clear as crystal, proceeding out of the throne of God and of the Lamb. In the midst of the street of it, on either side of the river, was there the tree of life, which bare twelve manner of fruits, and yielded her fruit every month. And the leaves of the uh, tree were for the healing of nations. And there shall be no more curse, but the throne of God and of the Lamb shall be in it, and his servants shall serve him. And they shall see his face. And his name shall be in their foreheads. And there shall be no night there, and they need no candle, uh, neither light of the sun. For the Lord God giveth, as I get these notes together here, uh, giveth them light, and they shall reign forever and ever. And he said unto me, These things are faithful and true. And the Lord God of the holy prophets sent his angel to shew unto his servants the things which must shortly be done. Behold, I come quickly. Blessed is he that keepeth the sayings of the prophecy of this book. And I, John, saw these things and heard them. And I, or when I had heard and seen, I fell down to worship before the feet of the angel which shewed me these things. Then saith he unto me, See thou do it not, for I am thy fellow servant and thy brother and the prophets and of them which uh, keep the sayings of this book, church worship God. And he saith unto me, Seal not the sayings of the prophecy of this book, for the time is at hand. Uh, he that is unjust, let him be unjust still. And he that is which is filthy, let him be filthy still. And he that is righteous, let him be righteous still. And he that is holy, let him be holy still. And behold, I come quickly, and my reward is with me to give every man according as his work shall be. He says in verse 13, I am Alpha and Omega. The beginning and the end, the first and the last. Blessed are they that do this commandments or his commandments. And he says that they may have right to the tree of life and may enter through the gates of or into the city uh, and are without dogs and or let's see. Uh, boy, law, I believe. Um. Can't read that word. Um, hmm. Dogs and sorcerers and whoremongers, I guess. There he is. 
uh, and murderers and idolaters and whosoever loveth and maketh a lie. And Jesus, Jesus has sent me an angel to testify unto you these things in the churches. I am the root and the offspring of David and the bright. Yes, I got to correct this part here. Uh, the bright and morning star. And the spirit and the bride say, come. And let him that heareth say, come. And let him that is a thirst say, come. As he says, and uh, whosoever will, let him take the water of life freely. For I testify unto every man that heareth the words of the prophecy of this book. If any man shall add unto these things, God shall add unto him the plagues. Uh, that are written in this book. And if any man shall take away from the words of this book of the prophecy, of this prophecy, God shall take away his part out of the book of life and out of the holy city and from the things which are written in the book or in this book. He which testifieth these things saith, Surely I come quickly. Amen, even so come, Lord Jesus. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Amen. Uh, pretty clear, my friends. Pretty stern, clear warning uh, to those false prophets and uh, peoples. Anyway, wow. Well, that's always an exciting Bible study podcast, friends. I'm glad to do it. Glad to share it. And we've got openings and we got like three uh three left so i think because uh daniel now let's maybe we could go close out with daniel let's see how long it is uh friends and and i don't know maybe i won't uh maybe i'll just add that to the next podcast um because as i you know it was a good couple hour podcast that's that's pretty typical of what's going on here um, if I remember, I remember where it's at. <laughs> I got it anyway. Um, yeah, I don't know. Maybe we'll, maybe we'll look at it and see uh, where we're at with it. Uh, so let me see if I remember. As God has tested me where the scriptures are. Do you know where the scripture is, my friend? Yes, I do. I do. All right, so we want to look at the book of Daniel, friends. Um, let me see what we want to do here. All right, so as it says, uh, Daniel 8. Daniel 8. I don't know, my friends. I don't know, but I know what I know. Because I got to know what I know. All right. So, uh, yeah, I haven't even done any of the studies here. Um, let's see what I want to do here. Because I don't even have my, my notes. My notes. My notes. I need my notes. All right, friends. I think we're going to close out there. I think that's a wrap for this one. And, again, let me kind of go up here. Here, I'll borrow that from that. No, I can't. It's actually got something on it, uh, which is typical. But uh, anyway. All right. Well, good stuff. Good enough. Uh, let's see. Uh, Daniel 8. So we'll open up with that, friends. That'll be on the next Bible study podcast. I'll go ahead and rewrite that and open up with that here. And of course, you know, because uh, it's got. Let's see, what time is it? We got. It's already two and a half hours, friends. Um, I think we'll be okay. Um, I I don't want to go too much further on this, uh, and I still have to do a lot of work on this book. So, um, yeah, we'll close out, friends. Uh, amen. Always, uh, you know, a good spot. So, let's see. Let me bring you over here, and I'll have to go through all that. But that's okay. All right. And uh, let's go. Because, I, yeah, I got a lot of work left in that. And that, that will take me some time to, to get everything together on that. So, um, amen. All right. 
What a good Bible study, friends. Always a good, it's always good to be here with you, friends. And, you know, and I try to bring you good quality content. And, you know, I, I just have been called to share the word, preach the message here, and just read the Bible. Uh, you know, and I appreciate you guys uh, hanging in there with me. I know it's, like I said, it's kind of off, con- off, you know, kind of different. But, I, you know, that's how I was, you know, pretty much taught. And this is what the Spirit showed me how to do this. Um, so thanks for sticking around. Thanks for subscribing to the channel. And, of course, uh, being so supportive here. Uh, I do appreciate that. I really do. And I'm glad to do it. So let me give you... Um, Another closeout scripture here as uh, we're about two and a half hours. I think that's a good enough time there. Uh, let's go to Romans 6, 10 and 11. By dying with Christ, I passed out of the dominion of sin, sickness, and Satan, and died all uh, all he died to and am alive to all. He is alive too because I have his life in me. I am alive to God. And all that God is and has, my life is absorbed into the life of Christ, a Christ-risen life in which he conquered sin, sickness, Satan, and death is in me, friends. Amen. All right. Well, that's it, my friends. I'm out of here. I will see you guys later tonight. It's a little after 120 here. Um, I think we're going to be over at... Four. Where are we at? Tuesday. I think we're going to be back because it's Tuesday. I think we're going to be back at Melon TV. We'll be jumping over there. New schedule. Kind of throwing that back up there. But yeah, we're going to be on Melon uh, TV. I think we're going to have uh, Twitch TV with us again. If you guys happen to be on that channel, check it out. Uh, Ministry Podcast Live there. Um, amen. All right, well, let's close out the channels. Let's get to our brethren and sisters here on, I believe, uh, we got uh, Block Talk Radio. Thanks again for hanging out with me. I appreciate you, Pastor Rick, Worldwide Live Ministry Podcast Network. On, uh, t- well, going on Tuesday, but this is the Monday night third service Bible study podcast, of course, on Restream TV, friends. And we'll be on StreamYard Wednesday, so... Uh, stay tuned for that, but uh, I'll see you later on tonight, friends, unless something changes, and then, of course, I'll let you know. Well, you'll you'll know, because you'll see it. So, anyway, like and subscribe, friends. I do appreciate that ever so much. Thank you guys so much. So, Blog Talk Radio, hey, I'll see you on the next broadcast, friends. Take care, brothers and sisters. Amen. Have a good one. Amen. All right. Yep, goodbye to Block Talk Radio. Amen. All right, get that rolled out here. Get that set. And let's bounce on down to our friends over at Re, uh, the, what is it? Um, uh, Spreaker, Channel One. See you on the next broadcast, friends. Take care. I am your host. And I got to dig into my wires. I don't know what happened there. I uh, lost all the connections and sound and volume and all that stuff. Uh, so fast forward the first 25 minutes or so, friends. I tell you, I don't know what else to do, but, uh, you know, try to work around things and uh, hopefully it will work out. So anyway, we started this podcast about 1030. I think that's a good, uh, good Bible study podcast there. Uh, amen. So let's go to our Restream TV. Yeah, well, let's close out uh, Spreaker here, friends. Amen. All right, guys, take care. And there we go. And that is set. Let's bounce on over to our channel, friends. Hey, you guys, take care. I appreciate you, Restream TV, and more. See you soon, friends. I'm your host, Pastor Rick, Worldwide Live Ministry Podcast Network, friends, here on Now Tuesday. But we started this around 1030, and you all know what happened there. All right, friends, take care. appreciate you. I love you. Be good, friends. Don't forget our friends, family brothers, or family, sisters, kids, uh, right here on YouTube and, of course, all the channels. You guys know who you are. Uh, I lost the list. I'll have to go through and reset that up. But uh, friends and family, you guys know who you are. appreciate each and every single one of you. 
right there on the channel. So thank you guys again. Um, yeah, let's uh, close out. I'll see you soon, friends. Take care. Thank you guys again. All right. And it is extending out. Let's go to channel three. Friends, take care. I appreciate you so much for hanging out with me as it is preparing the channel. Um, all right, live again, the 21st, friends, take care, I appreciate you, see you soon, friends, Pastor Rick, we'll live, live ministry podcast network, friends, see you soon.